Welcome back to another episode of the Skate Escape. I am your host, Malcolm Watson. The wheels are still rolling. Summer is upon us. It's basically summertime already here on the East Coast. Um, a lot to be excited about. The weather is finally opening up. I've been getting a ton of sessions in on this micro mini Skate Mafia board. And I am telling you, it is, uh, it's taking me back to the beginning, back to the essence of just being able to create and that uh, spark of just doing tricks over, knowing that you can do tricks on anything from a two by four on down to just a traditional regular size skateboard. So salute to those guys once again, Skate Mafia Micro Mini. I just scooped up another one. So now I have two completes and one deck on the side. Last time I checked online, they were all sold out. The um, online skate shop that I went to, it was the last one that they had in stock. Uh, I might end up grabbing one more deck just because I'm having so much fun and I'd hate to see this thing disappear off the market and not have one to keep progressing on. At this rate, I'm just excited to to try and do some stuff that I haven't really seen done yet or just some things that I haven't done in a long while on the board, much less being able to do it on this micro mini. But without further ado, let's jump right into it. Um, it's been a lot going on in the skate game, a lot of exciting amazing video parts dropping the most notable was jp souza who has been around for a lot of years i saw him last year at tampa pro and he won the best trick contest with a nolly hill front nose slide nolly big heel out which was amazing phenomenal it took him probably you could see him going through the progressions as the contest started jam session format and it took him probably about we'll say 15 tries to stick it and roll away and to this day i mean i'm, I'm gonna call it mbd and it's it's phenomenal that he could even pull it off in the contest run setting of a best trick because most people you know go for what they've been working on and don't really have it wired or they go for tricks that they just have on lock that they can do from contest to contest but to bring something new to the table salute to jp um, I'm excited to see that he's finally landed on Primitive, if that news is true. I went over to the website, still haven't seen his name added to it yet, much less the um, team roster. So I don't know if he's Am again or in the pro ranks. I haven't seen any product merch with his name on it, but I know he just came from Visual Skateboards, which was short-lived. And he had a pro model over there as well as riding for one of Chico's brands a couple years back, Central Skateboards. But finally deserving um, someone that has been putting it down for a long time and is finally getting their just due with a solid board situation. I don't know where Mickey Pop is going to end up as far as I know he's still on blind skateboards, but I would love to see him and a few other guys land on solid ground regardless of hearing what the money looks like in skateboarding. They, they all are well beyond deserving of having their name on an accredited board brand just to get that push into professional skateboarding um i caught an episode of the nine club you know i watch the show sparingly typically it depends on who the guest is on the show which will determine if i even tune in or not I, I'm, I'm just i'm here for the substance i don't need to hear you know what you wash your laundry with on the day that you did the trick down the thing so this week they had Muska on there and um great episode i'm, I'm not gonna lie i made it through half of it I, I like Muska's approach. He sold his house on in Hollywood, started over out in the sticks in Ohio, basically just living a dream, living off the land. I know he touched the mega millions just because he's guaranteed sold millions of the silhouette boards with his time at Shorty's and has been a made man for a long time from Supra on down to Shorty's to getting that circa money back in the day. But um, one thing that lost me, you know, I and skateboarding, there's always this this unwritten I won't even say it's unwritten because I've seen ads and little meme pages talking about uh, skateboarding accepts everybody but where I lost it with Muska was I, I couldn't help but be reminded of the TMZ clip that leaked a couple years back where he, he said he was drunk and he went off on the black security guard and was throwing the n-word around like Taylor Swift tickets and then blamed it on the alcohol once the footage surfaced and, and, you know, put out that somber apology. But that's what kills me in the game because, you know, when skateboarding, an uh, 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 art craft, 
that should welcome everybody. It really, you still deal with the invisible brick walls behind closed doors and in this industry, sometimes out in the open and sometimes privately, but it exists. And, you know, we, we like to give people the benefit of the doubt, but growing up in the environment I grew up in, in a household with parents that grew up in the, the radical wild 40s, 50s and 60s when the signs still read on the door, you know, uh, no colored people allowed or whites only bathroom, things of that nature. Even talking to my mom, she remembers after school kids going to get ice cream and she knew that she couldn't go to that parlor because she wasn't allowed based on the color of her, of her skin. Yet, overcoming all that prejudice and racism in America, you would never hear my family, my parents, anyone in my family use racial slurs or anything racist towards anybody. So I can't buy it for those that that will have a few drinks and then get called out and be upset and just start throwing words around and apologizing. And I just know within skateboarding, it should be a lot bigger and better than this, but it still exists. And um, that, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I, I tried to listen, but after about 45 minutes, my mind just drifted back to that TMZ clip. And I'm disappointed because, you know, Chad, he did a lot of things within the music, the hip hop genre with having legendary rap artists and, you know, trying to rap for a minute and was embraced by the culture. And so it was really disheartening to see that. And um, he's not alone. You know, it happened with Corey Duffel many moons ago and Brand still embraced him and kept it moving. And I'm sure he touched some real paper after the fact because he had a board for no less than probably 25 years and everything was good. But, um, you know, on that note, it's there, it's wild and it shouldn't be, but it just is what it is. So whenever you're looking at the nine club from time to time, they, they come from a naive, Oh, uh, uh, no, that, that couldn't happen type of mind frame with the conversations, but, but just know it's still there. There's still some barriers that need to get broken down. And um, hopefully you can find your place in this game. But on a positive note, the one thing I did take from his episode was Muska laid down the blueprint for anyone out there that wants to start a brand and at least make it in skateboarding in 2024. And that's the direct to consumer brand approach, which he laid out blatantly just with, with social media stemming from creating a following on your social media, uploading your clips, getting some boards done, learning Photoshop, um, and just selling it right off your website. People are interested in you. So salute to him for giving that game. And that's what I've been preaching for a long time. If you want to make it in this industry more now than ever, the door is wide open for you to go directly to the people in your immediate circle, in your environment, in your neighborhood, and um, just keep rolling from there. You no longer have to deal with the gatekeepers and deal with those invisible brick walls that are set up within this industry that many don't like to talk about and would like to think no longer exists. So go out there, follow your dream. If you still want to make it in skateboarding, don't let anybody stop you. Um, work on your craft, perfect it, put in your 10,000 hours on the board. And then from there, you know, branch out with your social media and get it, get it going, get to it, create a brand. You know, if you want to do it one deep, go for the dolo mission. If not, bring some friends in, some people that are ripping in your area and just open up that door, load up the van, gas it up and hit the road in the summertime and just make those memories. That's what it's all about. Branching out, traveling, skating new spots, getting inspired and just seeing new horizons, new spots, new opportunities. So get out there and get it. On that note, this has been another episode of the Skate Escape. Thank you for rocking with me. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Um, like stuff, share, you know, do all the all the all the shoe shine that goes along with these podcasts. And I will see you on the next episode. Until then, keep those things rolling. Peace.